In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, we gather this morning on Thanksgiving Day in order to give thanks to God for all the blessings that we have received. Today, instead of Mass, we will have a simple liturgy of the Word that we might reflect upon Thanksgiving, the spirit of Thanksgiving, the virtue, the spiritual attitude of Thanksgiving in our lives and think of all the blessings we have given to us by God. Let us pray. Father all-powerful, your gifts of love are countless and your goodness infinite. As we come before you on Thanksgiving Day with gratitude for your kindness, open our hearts to have concern for every man, woman, and child so that we may share your gifts in loving service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Sirach. And now, bless the God of all who has done wondrous things on earth who fosters people's growth from their mother's womb and fashions them according to his will. May he grant you joy of heart and may peace abide among you. May his goodness toward you, toward us, endure in Israel to deliver us in our days. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Our response. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness and love. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness and love. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness and love. I will give thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth. When I called, you answered me, you built up strength within me. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness and love. All the kings of the earth shall give thanks to you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth, and they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. Great is the glory of the Lord. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness and love. Our second reading comes from the second letter of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gifts as you await the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord, and thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, who you have heard the words of my mouth. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. And glory to you, Lord. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, 10 persons with leprosy met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices saying, Jesus, master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice, and he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. 
Jesus said in reply, ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. And praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today on Thanksgiving, I have many memories that come up in regards to Thanksgiving. Of course, a lot of the memories revolve around the Thanksgiving meal. I was always amazed growing up because when I was growing up, it seemed like the kitchens were always very small, usually just one standalone oven and cooktop. Um, sometimes you might have two ovens, but mostly it was just one oven and one unit. And when we go into my uncle, my aunt's house, aunt and uncle's house, or my house on Christmas Day, you would have all kinds of things. I, it was amazing to me how the women of those days were able to produce so much food for so many people in such a small kitchen. But I think back, there was a way in which they used to stack things in the oven. Some things were brought already cooked, obviously, as they shared the meat, cooked some things at home. But they would stack the food in the, in the oven to keep it warm. They had three or four big pots going on the stove. And then there was one or two or three or four roasters going on the side. One for turkey, maybe two turkeys, a dressing, uh, a big large one for vegetables, but all these things were going. And of a very small kitchen produces great meal. Uh, I, I, I'm wise about that because I've been to, invited over to houses over the years as a priest, especially when I go into an Italian home. I know to always try to walk through the kitchen because no matter how small it looks, I always want to know how much food's coming out of that kitchen because while the first course may be so delicious, there may be two or three other courses following along. So Thanksgiving has great memories in terms of the food that we eat. But also Thanksgiving reminds me of Thanksgiving, of the, of the, the kind of the attitude, the, the civil attitude of being thankful. This is a civil holiday. This is a holiday of our nation, giving thanks for our freedom, giving thanks for the foundation of this, of this country on the freedoms we have as members of this, as citizens. And one of them being the freedom to worship without threat of, of, uh, of danger. We have the privilege of, of course, voting in our government. We have all these privileges that we have as freedoms that we want to give thanks to God for this, to be able to live in this wonderful place. But also, it's also a, a reminder of the civil attitude of being thankful. When I was growing up, I remember my mother, of course, and as all mothers do, they kind of control things oftentimes in public with a look, okay? Or a look and a gesture. So sometimes if you're, you're in church, and I wasn't sitting next to my mother or father, which I usually tried to be at the end of the line of children, because I wanted some distance between them. But if I was misbehaving or not paying attention, my mother would just bend her head down, look over, and give me the look. If you were close to her, you might get the look and a little pinch on your arm. It was always amazing to me how much control and kind of and humane, but controlled pain a mother could give with a simple pinch on the arm. It lasted only for a second, the, the actual touch, but the pain endured for a while. And she would just look at you and, and look, you know. But sometimes without the look, just without also with the look, you would have been given a kind of a multiple choice test. So you're in a situation, usually public situation, and something's happening, okay? Uh, sometimes it was a, a kind of a nice thing. Sometimes it was a problematic thing. My mother would say simply, look at me with the look and say, what do you say? What do I say? Okay, it's a multiple choice test. It's either I'm sorry, please, or thank you. And I had to determine in that situation. That's, that was my social upbringing. When to know how to say thank you, please, or I'm sorry. And of course, being thankful, saying thank you for people, to things, for services given to us, is a polite gesture. It's a recognition of this person's effort. It's a recognition of this person as a person. Oftentimes in today's society, we treat people that serve us as simply objects for our control, for our pleasure, rather than seeing them as people who are serving us and be thankful for that gift of service that we have in that moment to help us along the way. Thankfulness is really a, a fundamental life choice to respect others and something we should have as a civil part of our engagement.
But for us as Christians, Thanksgiving is, is more than just being thankful for our country, thankful for the bounty, thankful for our blessings. It's something more deeper than that. It's a spiritual attitude. I was thinking one day if I had to remake the, the Holy Days of Obligation, if I had that privilege, which I don't, but if I did, I would add in a, a, a day of obligation for Catholics to go to Mass on Thanksgiving Day. Because I thought, well, you know, we as a people need to be thankful. And we need to physically get together to be thankful. But then I thought to myself, no, it's, it, that's not it. Because every time we come to Mass, we celebrate the Eucharist, the Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to us is not a day. It is a spiritual attitude, fundamental to being a disciple of Jesus Christ. When you get up in the morning, you may look around and the first words out of our mouth should be words of thanks. I know as I get older, I get, I get up and I give thanks to God that I know who I am, know where I am, and then I check and make sure I can get out of bed. Then I'm, okay, I got three things I'm thankful for right at the beginning of the day. I used to take those for granted. I don't take them for granted anymore. Sometimes thankfulness for us is a kind of... Uh, kind of a, an attitude that we turn off and on. That is, we're called to live in relationship with God in a thankful way. That's why the Eucharist, the Mass, we celebrate is a continual thank, at, at prayer of thanksgiving to God for sending, for allowing us to participate in the gift of offering himself to the Father for the gifts that come through his death and resurrection, from being able to receive him from the altar, all the blessings that come from Jesus as he saves us. As we participate in that salvation to the celebration of the Mass, it's a thanksgiving that we could carry with us. Oftentimes we're only thankful when God kind of helps us. It's not an attitude ongoing. So we get in trouble. Um, it's like a credit card we pull out and we need to buy something. And so we're, 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 out, of, we're out of options. We don't know what, what to do. We're, we're lost. We say, God, can you help us? Help me, help me. And so finally God says, yes, I can help you. And he helps us. And we say, thank you. But then we, we say, okay, I can take it from here. I, I kind of like, you know, I'm on my own now. When I need you, I'll call you back. But really what we should have in our minds and hearts is that we should live in a spirit of thankfulness. That is, see everything around us as a gift from God. Our very life is a gift. The blessings we have in terms of opportunity, uh, maybe financial uh, blessings, blessings of friends and family, are all blessings that we should continually be thankful for and acknowledge them as gifts, not as ours, our things that we own, that we have authority or power over us. That's what I said at the Feast of Christ the King. Do we, are we the king of our lives or are we, do we see ourselves as stewards of the gifts that God has given us? Our opening prayer says that we might see the gifts we have are given to us for the service and help of all. A thankful heart reveals how blessed we are, even in the little bit we may have. When we start our day with a spirit of, of bitterness that we, of all the things we don't have, then we don't even see the good things that surround us. There's that strange passage where the servants are given different talents while the king goes away, and one servant buries it. And the, the king says, no, you did a bad thing. You could have at least put it in the bank and got interest. Take, and the, the king says, take that one from the man who has, who now will have not, and give it to the one who has more. We think, what? what? That's, that doesn't make sense. Well, there's another way of looking at that. Anytime we come with a spirit that we're not thankful, we're bitter, we're jealous, we want more, we don't see what we have, we just want more, or we don't have enough, or, and maybe we really don't have very much. But when we concentrate on what we don't have, we don't see our blessings. And if they, if they are few, if we start our day, first of all, with being thankful for what we have, our whole attitude changes. We begin to see that we're not completely destitute. We have many blessings. We have family, friends around us, loved ones to help us. We have enough to eat today. We have more than enough to eat today. We have opportunities to help others. These are all blessings in our lives that should fill us with joy and hope and enthusiasm. But that only happens if we see our blessings as coming from God 
and realize that he gives them not just to us, but to help others. And for the thankful, joyful heart, it is always a generous heart. I have been to houses and visited people who had had very little, but the table they set for more was very generous. And anyone I think comes to their house to visit has that sense of generosity. Because what little they have, because they've known what it means to go without, they're more than willing to help those who need at this time. That's an attitude, a spiritual attitude that should guide everything that we do. We should move as a spirit of thankfulness. You know, dedicate, one of the scriptures says, dedicate yourself to thankfulness. Because it changes your whole attitude. It's what we receive at the altar of the Lord, thanksgiving to God for the blessings of our son Jesus Christ, his son Jesus Christ, who came to save us. We need to live our lives in that spirit of thankfulness. This day, many of you are gathering with family and friends. Maybe right now you're looking, you're mixing something while you watch, watch me on TV or on the internet or something. Maybe you're in the midst of setting the table. A lot of pressure is coming to bear to get everything ready. Maybe you're anxious to go to a house where that meal is being prepared for you. Make sure you give them your thanks for that blessing. Because I know I've tried it before. It's hard to cook a meal for a lot of people. But some of you may have a different kind of holiday today. And we need to be aware that many are out there who will be alone today. Or maybe this will be the first Thanksgiving you are alone because you lost a loved one. And you, even with, though you're going to be with people, you're going to be missed, this one person in your life. Or maybe you really don't have nowhere to go today or are unable to be with your family who are far away and they will call, and maybe FaceTime with you if you have a computer, but it won't be the same. And some will gather together today with nothing, no one to visit, no one to have over, and Thanksgiving will pass. Some today will be serving to help those in need. Maybe if you're alone, you can look up for an opportunity to do that. With our St. Vincent de Paul here in town, we'll be serving meals to the homeless. But we need to remember everyone today. And if, even if you're alone, it's important that we take a moment to recognize and the, maybe the few blessings you have and be thankful for them. The fact that hopefully you have a place to be sitting and warm, that you have a place knowing that God loves you and you're aware of that love, that you can pray for your family even though they're far away but you will have an opportunity for a phone call. And we need to remember if there's someone that we know that may be alone today, and we may be able to invite them over, consider preparing a meal and taking it to them, or calling them and going by for a visit. Remember aunts and uncles away from your house, and at the end of the day, when you have time, rather than sitting down and just watching football, say, let's go over to Aunt Joan's house and just say hi, or let's go to the nursing home and visit our aunt who's there. Think about spreading the spirit of thanksgiving and joy and, and not be it an end that we share with ourselves, but our generosity, our love, and our awareness of our blessing pours out into helping other people. There's really no reason that someone should have to be fully alone today. But sometimes it takes us to think about them and reach out. Let us today make this a wonderful thanksgiving of hope and new joy in our lives. Let us be aware of the blessings we have, not what we don't have, what we do have. And the more we realize how much we do have, the more we will, we, we will we'll see we have more than we thought we had. That was the idea. Take the, for the one who's not, who isn't, <clears throat> isn't paying attention to the gifts they have, the more they look at what they don't have, then they're, gonna, they're not going to see. So take that, give it to the other person, and, and when they concentrate on what they do have, they're going to see so much more blessing. Let us be that person today. When you go over to someone's house today, you know, um, it's very one's worried about all the conversations in such a polarized world. Make a rule that today we will only speak about things we're thankful for. Only things we're thankful for. And let's talk about the, the good things in our lives. And, um, and someone's going to tempt you. Someone's going to, you know, say, I thank God there are more Democrats in the government. Or thank God the Republicans are going to take over again. I'm thankful for that, okay? Let it pass. Just let it pass and talk about some spiritual blessing in your lives. It'll show the shallowness of that, and it'll also turn the conversation to a deeper sharing. And then think of how you might share from your meal to help another. Let us make this truly a, a national celebration of Thanksgiving 
but let it remind us that we are to be a thankful people every day. Every time we come to Mass, we celebrate the Eucharist, a prayer of thanksgiving. Let it not be a simple, polite gesture we do, but let it be an attitude of heart that truly is appreciative of the people that serve us, that are thankful, our thank yous to others is really an affirmation of their goodness and love and your deep appreciation. Let our thankfulness for God be always with us and let him help us see the blessings we have. And from our blessings and how generously we know God has helped us, then let us be generous to others so that no one ever goes hungry again and that we can bring a sense of love to everyone, even those most alone. And if you are today alone in your sorrows because of someone you lost, also remember the good and joyful announcement of Jesus that those who love him, those who walk with him, are with him in the Lord. And they are giving thanks to God along with us in heaven. And that one day we'll be together. We haven't lost them. We know where they are. And one day we will be together. So in the midst of your sadness, think about a joyful memory of this Thanksgiving that will hold you through, and remind you that however joyful that was, you're coming together in the future will be even more joyful. May God give you all a blessed Thanksgiving for myself and all the parish staff and all the Catholic Life staff. I wish you a happy Thanksgiving and may God bless you and let us continue to hope in the Lord with a thankful heart. As we gather here, brothers and sisters, this morning, to celebrate Thanksgiving Day and to celebrate and ask God to give us a heart, a thankful heart, let us offer our prayers and petitions now and an awareness and a thanksgiving for all the times God has answered our prayers in the past. We first of all, thank you for our Holy Father and all bishops and priests and those who serve us in the church, that God will continue to bless them with a desire to serve with all their heart and that we will continue to lift them up in our prayers and our support, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray this day for peace among all the nations, a peace that will come when everyone has a life worthy of living, who has opportunities to give them the basic necessities of life, a world in which we can all be thankful for the life we have. In that spirit of thanksgiving, may it be a source of peace in the world. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for today for those who suffer from isolation or sickness this day, that they may be strengthened by our love of them as brothers and sisters and our caring uh, presence in their lives as much as we can. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have died, that God will bless them with eternal life, and that he will help us in our time of sadness this day. Because we oftentimes feel that sadness so keenly in, on holidays like this, that God will give us a grace that reminds us not only of the loss, but of the blessings that person was in our lives, and that we will mix that sorrow with joy, because we know one day we'll have that joy with them in heaven. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And we all may have a thankful heart, not just be politely thankful, but genuinely thankful for our blessings, that we will see what we have as a gift from God. Yes, for our needs, and our, and our responsibilities, but also gifts that we can share with others. May we be good stewards of the gifts we bring on this Thanksgiving day. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers we pray to you. Give us a thankful heart. Make us always aware of our blessings, no matter how many struggles we may have, so that with that spirit of thankfulness, we may find hope in, in really confronting the difficult challenges of our life that we know we move forward not alone, but with your love. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. In this celebration, O Lord our God, you have shown us the depth of your love for all your children. Help us, we pray, to reach out in love to all your people so that we may share with them the good things of time and eternity. Through Christ our Lord, amen. 
The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our service of prayer is over. Go in peace. Go with a thankful heart and the joy of the gospel. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful and blessed Thanksgiving.